So if you've made it to this point in the video, comment down below and let us know what you think our interest charged will be in the second quarter of 2023. And whoever gets the closest will get a Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my husband and I are working on paying off our mortgage in five years total. So every month I do a recap video talking about what we did the previous month and what we accomplished and what we paid off or how much we paid off. As I'm filming this video, it's officially April, meaning that we are already done with one whole quarter of 2023. 25% of the year is gone over with and we can't get it back. So if you are someone who's been contemplating anything in life, time is going to pass you by whether you are working towards your goals or not. So take this as a sign to make the first step in whatever you need to accomplish in 2023. So of course, we're gonna start out with the most important goal that we've been working towards this year, and that is paying towards our mortgage. In March of 2023, we paid 4,580 to our mortgage. If you haven't already seen our 2023 goals video where I talk about everything we wanna accomplish this year, I will have that link down below for you. But one of the things we plan to do this year was to pay 4,500 towards our mortgage every month. And our ultimate goal by the end of the 2023 year is to have our balance at 92,000 or lower. So in March, we exceeded that goal by $80. If we are able to pay extra on it, typically that is coming from cash back on our credit cards or leftover spending money that we did not use. In March, we had $49.90 paid out from cash back. So about $50. Another thing that we also track is how much interest we accumulate on our savings accounts or how much interest is paid to us. In March, we had $51.84 paid to us in interest on our savings accounts. And that is because we have a high yield savings account. If you are someone who is looking for a high yield savings account, I do have a video on that as well. And we'll also have that linked in the description. One thing we have been aggressively saving for lately is the IRS tax bill that we found out we owed in February. This month, we were able to save $1,381.52 towards that bill. So just basically throwing it right in our savings account. We are at the point now where we are so close. Everything is accounted for when it comes to that. Each month, we automatically save $625 towards a tax sinking fund, which we began doing that at the beginning of this year before we even found out about the IRS. So we're continuing to do that every month, which is just save the 625. So right now where our balance is at with the 625 that we're going to save in April. After doing that, the only amount that we will need to fully satisfy how much we'll need to pay in taxes, not only federal, but our local taxes, our state taxes, the amount that we need in total is about $6,200. After the $625, we will just be $50 away from the $6,200 that we need and we'll finally be done with that and we could put it behind us and begin saving towards other things that we're gonna talk about in this video. So I'm super excited. Obviously, anytime you find out that you owe money to the IRS, big or small, it's something that's very intimidating. We've never owed quite this much before and it's really just not realizing how much we're going to end up owing after we made more than we ever have last year. So it was, it's a learning lesson. At first, I was kind of just like, you know what? I don't want to change anything because I'd rather just have all that money throughout the year. But we did end up adjusting it a little bit. So we should be good for next year. Other things that we were able to accomplish in March, as you all know, I have been doing DoorDash, Uber Eats. I actually just did this yesterday morning as well for April, of course. In March, I was able to make $190.35. So basically $200, which is good. It's $200 that we did not have before. And yes, I do still have overtime available at my full-time job, but lately I've just really been trying to step away from it and spend more time actually physically being at home and not working, taking the time to do other things. A lot of times I'm doing it late at night after I get off or maybe extending my shift by a little bit. I'm still trying to get to the 10 hours per pay period of overtime, but I've really just been cutting it off. 
after that lately i've just been trying to be off on sundays like no matter what i've loved the time just being at home doing things around the house i need to get done filming these youtube videos whatever needs to be done so i just you really i really just feel like i need at least one day a week just to myself to do anything that i need to do watch tv whatever just take that day so moving forward i really hope that i can continue that i feel like this year i really just gotten an awakening of being able to start to tone it down with being such a workaholic i've just really valued any time i have off and yes the overtime is awesome but it just it's not bringing me joy like it used to i'm not having that those same feelings of yes i can get this done and get that done we'll be caught up on this or caught up on that at work and just really just being able to just turn off the switch and just physically be present like at home by myself just enjoying my time off so i think that the workaholic in me is starting to go down just a little bit like it's just it's there it's it's very small but it's there and i'm it's starting to get bigger in my mind just okay Seneca, you gotta take some time off you gotta tone it back a little bit so another thing that we mentioned in our 2023 video was that we are trying to do six no spend months this year which has pretty much just been every other month so in january we did it in march we also did it if you don't know what that is that's pretty much just not spending extra money on top of things that you already plan to spend or not letting like outside of any pre-planned expenses if something comes up you know that's one thing like we know throughout the year pretty much what we're going to spend money on overall and then just basically not taking those extra target trips not buying stuff on amazon if you don't need it and just being super intentional with our money um, in order to pay as much as we're trying to pay towards this mortgage, we really have to be so disciplined. And it's to the point that it's a little tight with what, how much we're trying to pay off every month. So any extra money we can get has been good. The delivery that I've been doing, food delivery, it's been good because it's different. I like driving sometimes and, you know, it's extra walking, it's a little exercise. So... I like doing that it's not you know it's actually bringing me joy which is makes it easier even though it is you know work at the end of the day but in march there were some times that i was feeling the urge to spend not so much buying things but just getting food which like we said before our plan is to eat out twice a month which in march i did eat out three times and that's because my friend had a birthday dinner we already had some money set aside for that so i did that that was a good time i'm not a super social person i'm just such a homebody i'm not super social but i think that for the sake of my friend i can go out and do that at least once or twice a year um i just i really just don't don't go out it's just not my thing i just i stay home so it was different i did it and i feel like i'm good for the rest of the year on going out and doing stuff so when it comes to saving things like i said have been a little bit tight with trying to achieve everything we need to achieve every month it's just as you all know we have some issues with our stove lately we've been trying to decide what to do with that you guys gave us your suggestions which we definitely appreciate and it actually kind of made made us second guess what we originally wanted to do which we originally were just thinking you know we'll get it repaired but then you guys started commenting like just replace it you know get a new one stuff like that and then i we definitely were like literally going to just get a new one but it's really just how i am is like we have the stove that technically the oven doesn't work the stove top works perfectly fine i just feel like it's so new and yes it's having this issue but what i've read online and what the technician told us is that this is such a rare issue they barely see it it's barely online so it's just something that's so rare and that it's unlikely that it would happen again is what I'm reading. And at the end of the day, I want to spend the least amount of money possible because we have so many other things that our money could be going to at this point. So we decided we're going to get it repaired and we scheduled the appointment for this coming Tuesday, which is April the 4th. So that day they're coming out. They have, you know, some type of limited warranty on a certain time frame. It's really not that long, maybe... 30 to 90 days and then there's warranty on the parts as well if anything were to go wrong with the parts within a year they'd come back out and fix it but at that point we would have to pay for like labor and for them to come out but 
as far as the parts that would be covered. So fingers crossed if we have any other issues after that, it's obviously meant for us to get a new stove, but at this point, that's what we've decided to do and I'm happy with it. We've been wearing out our air fryer so much lately. It's a good thing we have an air fryer because if it wasn't for that, we would not be able to make a lot of the food that we make at home. Like we said, we barely eat out, so we really are always eating at home. So the air fryer has definitely come in handy. If you don't have an air fryer, get an air fryer because it is so convenient and easy to clean and quick. And if your oven goes out like ours, it is a good thing to fall back on. So we plan to use our emergency fund to cover the cost of the oven repair. And like we said, it should be about 440 out the door that we'd have to cover this month. So we're gonna use our emergency fund. We really don't use it for anything. One of our goals was to add $4,000 to our emergency fund. We've been saving every month towards that. So what our plan is, is just I hate to spend from the emergency fund, but this is a smaller repair. It's not like a huge amount of money. We were actually really lucky that we did not end up having to take any money from our emergency fund when it came to our IRS bill. So it's gonna be around $450 that we have to take from it. But our plan is just to put that money back at some point. So whether that's, you know, an extra $50 we're saving each month or later on down the year when we have a three paycheck month, what have you. That's what we're gonna end up doing. So that way it's not messing with anything else that we have going on in April. One thing that was, that's was that been super important to us is actually getting a new couch. I'm not exaggerating when I say this couch gets a little bit worse every day. Like, it's awful. And I talked about this as well. Like, there's so many things I'm touching on right now that we talked about. I talked about more in detail in the 2023 video. So if you haven't seen that, definitely watch that because I don't want to necessarily expand on too much in this video. But... Basically the quality is just very poor. We got it from Wayfair and I definitely would not suggest for anyone to get a couch if you haven't seen it and sat on it and really taken the time to make sure it's the one for you in person. And that's something I'll probably never do again. We need a new couch so bad. This couch is slouching more and more every day. It's it's just the quality is going down every day. Right now, the sinking fund that we have for that is sitting at $550. You've seen my video where I was going out shopping for a chase, which was my like furniture shop with me video. As you can see, the couches in our area, they're nowhere near $550. We'll have that linked below as well if you haven't seen that one. But we're gonna need a lot more to get the cost of the couch. So we gotta start saving more. The good thing is, is that Dennis has picked up a couple extra shifts in the month of March and April. So that money we should be able to add towards it. Our original goal was to have this couch by July 1st because we have a three paycheck month in June, which would mean that we'd have a little bit of extra money that doesn't have to go towards bills and things like that. So even after that, as far as like my calculations and what everything's coming to, I still don't think that it's gonna be enough to really get us to a good place with the cost of a couch. So we might have to push it out. I'm hoping to get some type of bonus in July. And if we can get that, that would help us get the remaining amount of money that we need. So at least it would still be in July. If for some reason that doesn't happen, then we're just gonna have to keep saving up. Like at the end of the day, we're still using the couch. It's still there, it's something to sit on. We literally hate this couch, but if we have to go a little bit longer with it, that's just how it's gonna have to be. Lately, I've also been trying to start planning or looking into other things that we might have to get this year. One thing I've thought of recently is that our youngest son, he is two years and three months and he's a heavy boy. So the thing is, is that we pick him up to put him into his crib that he's still sleeping in. I'm really thinking that he's getting close to a point where he's going to need a toddler bed. And he does have a convertible crib, the type that can transform into a toddler bed. But one thing that we've noticed about him and comment down below if anyone else has experienced this with their kids, Ever since he has been sleeping in this crib, which was probably about six months old, he has been hitting his head on the crib, like on the walls of the crib. He hits his head on it. It doesn't seem to hurt him in any way. And it's just something that he's been doing in it. Like he does it to get himself to sleep. And sometimes when he's waking up, he'll do it. Everything I read online says that it's not as bad as it sounds. So we haven't you know, worried about it. He, it seems to make him happy, but 
That's why I'm hesitant to keep the bed we have because I don't necessarily want him to have to keep doing that. That's why I'm kind of trying to look into getting a some other type of bed that doesn't have the wooden walls and things like that. If you guys have any suggestions on toddler beds, definitely let me know. But I know that he's getting to that point where he is going to be needing to say goodbye to his crib because with him being so heavy, it's starting to hurt me at this point, having to lift him up over it and place him inside of his crib. He's a big boy. So that's on my radar at this point is just thinking about, wow, he might be needing a new bed soon, but we are very thankful that we already have money set aside for if anything comes up with our kids. That's something I touched on in this video right here. So I'll also have that link down below. We have money already set aside for if our kids need anything. So I'm planning to use that and hopefully again, replace the money throughout the rest of 2023 at some point. So that's what we have going on right now. As far as April, of course, goals moving forward is to continue the 4,500 towards the mortgage, saving as much money as we can, using the money that Dennis will make with the shifts that he has picked up. With this being the end of the quarter, us just into the second quarter of 2023 now as well, I wanted to talk a little bit about what we've accomplished in the first quarter or so far this year. So when it comes to our mortgage, we have paid $13,860 towards our mortgage so far this year. Of that, 1047 has gone to interest, which we're happy with. Every year since 2021, since we started paying extra principal payments, our amount of annual interest has gone down. We're expecting it to continue going down this year. With us being done with the first quarter and only $1,000 has gone to interest, I think that's pretty good. The amount of interest that we get charged each month on our amortization table, it decreases every time we make a large principal payment. It goes down a good amount. So I'm expecting the amount of interest, like for example, in the second quarter of 2023 to be less than 1047. So if you've made it to this point in the video, comment down below and let us know what you think our interest charged will be in the second quarter of 2023. And whoever gets the closest will get a $100 gift card from us. Other things we've accomplished so far in the first quarter of 2023, we paid our property tax bill in full for the entire year. That is the first time we've ever done that in our entire life. So it's a good feeling. Obviously, it's something that's our responsibility. But at the end of the day, doing something like that and knowing that we can just continue to save and get paid interest on our savings for next year's tax bill is a great feeling. So, so far we're super excited about everything that we've accomplished in 2023. Only way that we're going to be able to accomplish those goals is by doing the same thing, a little bit of the same thing every single time we get paid, which means we have to keep being very intentional with our spending. It's at the point now where we don't even think about it. Whenever we get paid, the money just gets sent to the mortgage and whatever we have left over is for savings, bills, spending money, etc. So if you keep doing the same thing, especially if you're not even thinking about it, so you can think about doing something other than what you need to do, then you're going to keep getting the same results. And that's what we've been able to do so far, not only this year, but just every year that we've been paying on this mortgage. So super excited about the rest of the year. Um, another thing that we've done because we don't reward ourselves enough is we decided that Every time that we hit a good milestone, so under 125, under 100,000, 50,000, so on, is we are going to treat ourselves. We are going to get anything that we want to eat, whether that's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or likely for me, it's probably just gonna be like lunch and dessert, but we're gonna be spending as much as we want on that, getting whatever we want to eat, and just splurging a little bit because it just is, it's an encouragement. It's a small little pick me up and an encouragement, okay. Next time that we get another milestone, we're gonna be eating like kings again. So if you enjoyed this video, please like the video, comment down below. Don't forget to comment and let us know what your prediction is for quarter two interest paid on our mortgage and subscribe if you haven't already and we will see you in our next video.